For a gospel art, listen, whether you grease your hair or not, your spirit is the most important tool you have. Write that down. The essence of what we need to do is to rise above mediocrity. Think like a businessman. Get involved in everything that is happening if you have a record label. How much quality are you putting in what you do? So we have to, have to understand the power of social media and leverage on it to be able to create a digital revolution. Excellence is not the preference, it's the standard of what we represent as Christians. It is God's responsibility to bless you. It is your responsibility to prosper. God will not do that for you. Child of God, you and I must command God's essence. See, God's essence, absolute truth cannot be denied. The power of focus is the new way to get people interested in what you're doing because so many people don't read anything anymore. It's so sad. Who are you? What is your brand promise? What do you think and say about yourself? You need to be positive. It's God's responsibility to bless you. It is your responsibility to prosper. But you can't prosper if you don't have products. Your music is a product. Whatever it is you do, that is a product. Look, you've got to understand the station format. You want to play your song, is it a beat format? Is it in the beat format? Is it in the cool FM format? It's a classic format. If a song is coming out today and you want to go to Classic FM, <laughs> it's classic. What we don't know is that for the gospel artist, your music is weapon. It was as powerful as a gun, as a cannon, as a drone. God saw it exactly the same way he saw a sword, saw a shield, saw a spear, saw your worship. So I'm going to be talking with about mastering the business of your talent. Um, there's a quote here. So it says here that the Christian shoemaker does his duty not by putting little crosses on the shoes, but by making good shoes, because God is interested in good craftsmanship. I'm going to say that again. The Christian shoemaker does his duty not by putting little crosses on the shoes, but by making good shoes, because God is interested in good craftsmanship. Please tell the person beside you, God is interested in your good works. All right, now I'm gonna go a little, just touch a little bit about you know the Bible, but I'm gonna get into the business of this matter. You need to recognize why what you do is important. Um, sometimes when we read the Bible, we think it's a storybook. And I like to think about the Bible, you know, like a movie. So there are certain things that when I read in the Bible, it leaves me with more questions than answers. So I read in the Bible that Jesus was about to begin his ministry, and the Bible says that he was walking down the shore, and he sees, I think it was um, James and John, or what is Peter and John, like two disciples particularly, fishing with their father's nets. And the Bible says Jesus walked up to the guy, and he pretty much just told the guy, follow me. Or as Nigerian people would say, show. Tell the person beside you, show. All right? So he told the guy, show. And the Bible says this guy and these guys left everything they were doing to follow him. Najaz, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. What was it about him that caused them to see him and leave their present for an uncertain future? Somebody say show. Now, just in case you still don't get the memo, the Bible says that, you know, I like to say, say this way, because we're young people. Jesus was a bad guy. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? He was a bad guy. Jesus was so bad that when the FIRS came to meet him and said, have you paid your tax? Jesus said, you know, just chill. Hold on a second. He says, yo, Pete, I want you to go and do that thing you do. That thing you do. And he says, go to the area that you do that thing you do. And then when you do that thing you do, he says, you're going to catch a fish. And when you catch that fish, he said, you're going to open, open its mouth. You're going to get a coin. Pay not just my taxes, but also pay yours too. Somebody say, show. Sure. Now, just in case you still didn't get the memo last time, Jesus was so bad that he heard his best friend was ill. The Bible says that they called him and they said, Lazarus, the one you love, just in case there are many Lazaruses in your life, the one you love, not the one that loves you, 
because everybody says that they love you. He says, the one you love is ill. Now Jesus, let me call him Jeezy. Jeezy is just chilling. And he doesn't show up. They call him, doesn't pick. Like his picture, I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's at, I mean, I can imagine Jesus at a crusade, like at, at, at an event like this. And he just does, does, man, selfie, man. Tight, amazing event at Capernaum, fantastic. Smile, and he takes a selfie. They like his picture on Instagram. Jesus doesn't answer. They send him a met message on Twitter, DM, doesn't respond. They have his BB pin, send him a message, doesn't respond. And after a couple of days, he says, you know what? All right, I think we've waited long enough. Let's go. And then Jesus gets there. We know the story. Jesus gets there. And I think it's Mary or Martha. I don't know which. But one of them is saying to him, that, listen, man, if you had been here when this guy passed away, we, you know, we would not have, you know, we, he wouldn't have died. And I can imagine Mary or Martha crying her eyes out. And she's, you know, banging on Jesus' chest, you know, because she's just lost her brother. And Jesus is a friend of the family. And knowing his healing power, that's what she knew, knowing his healing power, if you had been here, you would have saved him. And I can imagine she's pumping on his chest and she's crying and she's upset. And Jesus is like, please, don't mess up the suits. <laughs> I mean, just chill, just hold on a second. And he says, you know what? Just take me to where you buried him. And then Jesus doesn't even do too much. The Bible says that he gets there, looks at the crowd. Because sometimes, you know, God will wait for a crowd before he gives you your resurrection. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That's a different message. Sometimes you just wait for the crowd to gather. And then he gets there and he says, you know, Lord, Father, he said, you, know, you know that you and I, you know I don't really need to pray. He says, but so that they will know that you sent me. Lazarus, show. Sure. And the Bible says that the man came out leaping and jumping. There was no flyer. There was no evangelism. There was no billboard. There was no microphone. But because of show, the Bible says people followed him. When was the last time you had show? Please ask the person beside you, where is your show? See, show is important. You know, you look at, you go to a Jay-Z concert, and all he does is this. And you see a whole crowd doing this. That's show. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? As a Christian, you need to have show. The essence of what we need to do is to rise above mediocrity. Now, I don't know, I'm not, I know this is for, so to speak, gospel musicians and people like that, but I'm going to make this a little ge generic so that irrespective of what you do, whether in the business of music or in business in general, or as long as you have a gifting and talent, you should be able to monetize that. All right? Now, we've all heard the story of the parable of the talents. It's a very popular scripture that we are aware of. Now, I did a lot of research, which is why I'm passionate about this, mastering the business of your talents. And I found out that, for example, um, the word talent was it's derived from the Greek word tantalon, which means, you know, it's a measure, it's a weight. It was legal currency in the time of Jesus in, in those days. It's like what, what we would say dollars and pounds are today. All right. Now, in the story, we would hear that the master gave somebody five, you know, five talents. He gave another guy two. He gave the last guy one. And in my mind, especially if you've read my book of Bible stories, anybody who read my book of Bible stories, right, we would think that it was a, a few coins. Now, what he gave them was not a few coins. The Bible, um, research says that he that what was given was a block of either gold or silver. So they were not given coins. They were given a block of either gold or silver. And that block normally would weigh something within the regions of 33 to 50 kg. So imagine being give, given a, a, a bag of Gary in terms of silver or gold, as the case may be, in weight. Now... Just in case you don't know how valuable this talent was, it was one talent could pay a ship's crew of mercenaries of 170 men for one month. So one talent could pay the salary of 170 mercenaries. Now these were not ordinary guys, these were soldiers, these were mercenaries for hire. It would pay their salary for one month, all right? Now, 
In Jesus' day, one talent was still equivalent to 6,000 drachma. Now, what, what does that mean? You would have to work every day for 16 and a half years to earn one talent. You would have to work every single day, Monday through Sunday, no vacations, for 16 and a half years to earn one talent. Now, just in case you still don't know what that means, in today's currency, a talent is equivalent to 660,000 US dollars. 660,000 dollars. Now, bringing that to our exchange rates, and let's peg the dollar at 350. Let's just leave it there. I know it's going up and down, but let's just leave it at 350. Technically, $600,000 or one talent is equivalent to 210 million naira. So the guy, he gave one talent, he gave him in our currency 210 million bucks. The guy he gave two, he gave him 420. The guy he gave five, technically gave him about, about a billion. That's why the Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Listen, let me help you understand. It is God's responsibility to bless you. Now, how many of you believe that God has blessed you? Right? All of us. Now, it is your responsibility to prosper. God will not do that for you. That's why in the Bible, he says in Joshua, that this book of the law will not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate and observe to do that you will make your way prosperous. He even says, I am the Lord that teaches you how to profit. You will profit. So if you don't do anything with it, listen, I help, listen, pray about it, name it, claim it, fast it, ain't nothing going to happen. It is your responsibility to prosper. Let me say it like this. It is God's responsibility to bless you. It is your responsibility to prosper, but you can't prosper if you don't have products. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot prosper if you don't have products. Now, please recognize, many of us are emerging or aspiring or established personal brands. You are a product. Your music is a product. Whatever it is you do, that is a product. You are a product. So let me first help you understand that you can imagine why the master was so ticked off when the guy buried his talent. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Because initially I used to read the scripture, P.I., and I used to wonder, uh -uh, at least the guy didn't lose his capital. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You gave him one talent, he didn't lose it. He lost it. But what he lost was the time value of money. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So imagine, for, so let, let, let me explain the time value of money for you. So a couple of months ago, you probably wanted to buy that iPhone or whatever it was on Amazon. And the, the, the dollar was maybe about, I don't know, 150, 170 at a time. If you had bought it then, you would have saved almost 170,000. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because now the dollar is 350. If you had bought it when it was 170, instead of buying it now that it was 350, you would have saved 170. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? That's the time value of money. So recognizing, the master says to him, listen, the least you should have done was put it in the bank. It would have given me interest. Do you know what the interest rate on 210 million naira is? Does anyone understand where I'm coming from? If the interest rate on 210 million is 10%, that means passively, just that's 21 million naira, maybe every 90 days for doing nothing. Now understanding, you have a responsibility to prosper. That's why the Bible says, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, that I've seen, the, I've seen a great terror upon the earth. I've seen princes walking barefoot, and I've seen servants riding on horses. It is God's responsibility to bless you. It is your responsibility to prosper. God doesn't care whether you drive a Range Rover or use a bicycle. He doesn't care. The, 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 the ground in heaven, the concrete, are made of, is made of gold. So he doesn't care. The gates are made of jasmine and topaz and emeralds and all those. He doesn't care. 
But if you don't do anything with it, it's entirely up to you. Now, let me put this in perspective, then I'll get into the presentation proper. I started my business in 2010 after you know, working in the, at an, an amazing firm. And at the time I left, I, it was the worst time to leave, okay? Um, my wife was pregnant, which is a, an amazing thing. Um, but when you don't have money, that testimony can be a bit of a trial. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Right? And at the time I left my job, I had exactly 20,000 naira in, the, in my account, in my checking account. Um, my wife had previously left her job, so she didn't have any money. Um, my rent was due in three months, and I was scared. And when we left, I, I'll never forget, my, I have an amazing wife, and you know, she said to me, she said, jump, God will catch you. <laughs> I said, God will catch me. I said, isn't it better to jump? Uh, should we not have a parachute just in case, <laughs> in case God is busy <laughs> on the day we decide to jump? Maybe he's busy attending to other matters, right? And we left, and we had 20,000 naira. And every day, I noticed we started spending an average of, ten, ten, uh, of 1,000 naira. So by day three, we had 17,000 naira. So by this time, I knew I had 17 days to turn my life around. <laughs> so here I am sitting at home complaining and wondering what the heck I'm going to do with my life. And then he reminds me of something that I always say. He says, are you not the one who says, it's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. So for those of you who are probably hearing this for the first time, I'm going to say it again, and I'll say it slowly. It's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. So I'm sitting at home, bemoaning my fate, complaining that we have 17 days to go. How am I going to take, you know, get my act together? And I have no office. I have no staff. I have nothing. All I have is a laptop. And I'm sitting at home complaining. And I say to myself, and he reminds that we're having this conversation. And you know, he says to me, you know, who would you like to do business with? So I start mentioning the names of organizations that I'd love to consult, with, consult for. He said, if you could make any amount of money in a, in a year, how much would you like to make? I said, 88 million. You know, Im imagination is free. Just say what you like. I just say 88 million. I just put it out there. This is someone who has 17K and dwindling, right? It says 88 million. I said, how would you make it? I said, write down the skill sets you have. So I started writing down the skill sets I have. Now, you know, I'm also, I also have this incredible distinction of also being a two-time college dropout. So I have no college degree, as the case may be. So getting a job, quote unquote, they will ask me for my CV. <laughs> and since the highest, so to speak, highest academic qualification on my resume is an SSC, I mean, you can't say that you went to school and you dropped out. You, that doesn't make it on your CV. I don't know if you know what I mean. You can't do 2-0 or 2-1 or third class or almost a third class. You can't put it there. You can't just say BSc in 1997 till attempted. You can't. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? Um, for real, though. Yes, for real. So I'm sitting at home and I'm complaining and trying to you know, work it out. And he says to me that if you could work with, you know, what are your skills? So I started writing them down. At that time, I had consulting, ex management consulting experience of about five years. I wrote that down. Um, I wrote down speaking, you know, motivational speaking. I have a flair for that. Um, I had this crazy idea that I'd, I'd write a book one day, so I wrote that down. And for each of my skills, I gave them financial targets. Now, that's one of the things we don't do. We just have skills, but we don't, you, if you don't place a demand on something, you won't get anything. You have to first place a demand on your gift. You can't invest in business and not expect anything. You have to place a demand on it. So I broke it down. I said consulting, 30 million. And I rationalized that if I got 10 clients to give me 3 million over the course of a year, I'd make 30. And I broke it down, 88 million. Long story short, um, I start, you know, here's the thing. When I left my consulting firm, um, I made a decision that I was not going after any of their clients. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Just from a place of integrity. I just figured, you know what, let me just start all over and start by myself. And here I am bemoaning my fate and complaining. And God reminds me and he says, wait, hold on a second. If, you, if Zenith Bank calls you, for example, to do a training on customer service, do you have customer service training material that is not your previous employers? I said, no. He said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the faith of your wanting to do business with Zenith is the slides right now. That is within your control. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Because we spend too much time focusing on the things that are out of our control. 
So I don't have an office. I don't have a desk. I don't have anything. So I put two paint buckets together on top of each other. I put my laptop on top of the paint buckets. And I sit down and I start creating presentation slides and da-da-da-da-da, sending proposals. Luckily for me, um, before the 17th day elapses, uh, somebody hears that I've left my previous place of employment, um, knows the skills that I have, and says, you know, we have this training, blah, 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 blah. It's in Niger States. We want you to come and do a one-day you know, one session. How much is it? And I charge them 250K. And they paid, so I bought myself 250 days, if you know what I'm saying, right? But now here's the interesting thing. In doing, the, doing my gift, I started noticing that people started asking me for they, they started asking me for problems that my gifts could solve. So I would hear people say to me, man, Steve, I love the way you communicate, man. Do you MC events? And I was saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I have a policy, and this should be your policy. Never say no to what your gift can say yes to. You hear me what I'm saying? Never say no to what your gift can say yes to. So even if you've never done it before, but your gift can answer, you'll say yes. you say yes and figure it out later. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? So I said, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, sure, of course I can. The person says, ah, no, Steve, I know you can. You know what? So she says to me, my friend's getting married in December, Aisha. Um, I'm going to give her your number, blah, 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 blah. Now, Aisha calls me. Now, if you notice, um, I kind of talk funny, right? You notice I, I kind of talk. You, yeah, you guys, I kind of talk funny. Yeah, uh, funny, 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 yeah. I kind of talk funny. And what normally happens is, and I'm sure, and I, this happens to me all the time, so when I come up to the microphone and I start speaking, I notice in, in the crowd, there's that initial one, two minutes of, this guy they form. Yes, yes, you get it. Then maybe another three, four minutes, they're like, you go soon catch on. So, then maybe after another five minutes, you're like, you'd be like, be like, say, yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, I know that. And so I use that to my advantage. So when Aisha calls and she says to me, is that Steve Harris? I say, yes, this is Steve Harris speaking. How may I help you? Now, of course, that is, it is necessary for the business that I do. You know what I'm saying? So she says to me, can we have a meeting? So long story short, I go in my little tiny car, go to Lecky and have a meeting with Aisha and her husband or fiance at the time. And Meanwhile, I'd never compared an event before, so I'd called a friend of mine to say, dude, how much does this cost on the average? So he says to me, well, it's like, you know, about 100K, 200K. I was like, oh, for real. Now, at, you know, at that time, you know, that was a lot of money for me. So Aisha says to me, so how much does it cost? And I said to her, well, you know what, um, we normally charge... <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. I said we, because people don't want to do business with one-man businesses. So you have to perceive and package yourself as if you're more than who you are. Even God has partnerships. He says, let us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let us make man. <laughs> right? So I said, you know, we normally charge... Now, hold on. I said, we normally charge 300,000 naira. Now, when I said it, inside my heart, I was like, hey, Steve-o. <laughs> you're a thief, sha. Because I had no reference point for earning that kind of money. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Listen, let me, there, the P, P, I, and I, we do, we're life coaches and stuff like that. So in psychology, there are certain things called limiting beliefs, right? So a limiting belief is, for example, when I say to you, and I'm sure, you know, P, I is a pastor. So P, I can say, for example, by the grace of God, in 30 days, somebody here is going to make one millionaire. Now, we would all say amen. Now, after we say amen, your mind now begins to say, wait, so, how will they take to us? How shall these things be? Now, your mind begins to search for references. Have I made a million bucks before? No, no, no. Have any of my friends made a million bucks? So your, your mind is doing that searching, searching, searching. If it has file not found, and the emotion that comes into your heart is an emotion of fear, you have a limiting belief. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. If I say to you, if your friend says to you, oh boy, do now, let's go to the Eco Hotel and have lunch. <laughs> yes, what emotion just came into your heart? You're like, uh, why? <laughs> What's happening there? <laughs> There's that, uh, 
Do you understand? What's happening? Is there, are they giving away free food? Let me ask you a question, dumb question, no disrespect, okay? Is there anyone here who, for example, has never been to maybe the Eco Hotel or the Inter Intercontinental Hotel and Suites? You've never been there to have lunch before that you paid with your money. Fantastic, please raise your hand. Thank you for your honesty, thank you so much. Can I just ask, quick, quick sample, why haven't you been? Why haven't you been, just anyone? Sweetheart, why, sir? No, no reason, sweetheart, what did you say? The money, anybody else, sir? There was no God bless. There's no need. Why are we going? <laughs> for what? <laughs> yes, for what? Why are we going? <laughs> then when there's Iyabasira, right? <laughs> eh? White House. Eh? Uh, round up ahead. Do you understand? Eh? Ghana High. Eh? So check it out. Now, what you said, no money, no need, why, those are, those are limiting beliefs. Now, they are true. You have had no need for it. It's true. But guess what? It's what your mind has told, what your subconscious mind has told you that you believe that has kept you where you are. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? So your subconscious mind is actually what creates, let me put it this way, your life experiences creates your belief systems. Your belief systems determine your decisions your decisions will determine your destiny. Listen, where I'm going, this is important, and this is tying to all what I'm saying, so stay with me again. Your life experiences will create your belief systems. Your belief systems will determine your decisions. Your decisions will determine your destiny. Now, all these things are governed by your subconscious. It is not your, your logical, you have never said, sir, the gentleman who said there was no need, sir, have you ever said in your life, in this life, lie, lie, I'll never go to a cool hotel. Have you ever said that? Sweetheart, what about you? Have you ever said that? It's not a logical conversation. It's your subconscious mind based on your life experiences. Are we together so far? Are we together? Are you with me? All right, let me bring this to where you are so, that, so this, it's more relatable, then I'll, I'll get into this. I grew up in a family where every time we needed something, we'll, tell, we'll ask my dad, and my dad will say, you know what, we have to manage, manage, manage. Can I get a witness from anyone like that? Fantastic. So manage, you know. Um, yes, when my, when my friends were going abroad for holiday, you know, to Disney World and stuff like that, we were going in broad. You know what I'm saying? So we were going to the village, right? And when we would complain, <laughs> oh, you didn't know what in broad was. That's, that's a villa. <laughs> You know that, abroad, in broad, yes, exactly. And then when we would complain and ask my dad, oh, why are we going to the village? My dad would say, you need to know your roots. <laughs> and I'm like, look, those guys who are traveling to Disneyland, those guys are enjoying fruits. I don't want roots. This roots thing is not working. You know what I mean? And that was, con that was my experience over a long period of time. So I was trained to manage. I hated it, but I was trained subconsciously to manage. Now I get married to a very wonderful, amazing woman. And I would go to, you know, we have this routine every, uh, after Sunday after church, take my family out to lunch. And then we would go to the places that were comfortable in my life experiences. Places that you, no weapon formed against me. See, see, Coke is still 100 bucks. No, I don't know if you know what I mean. They can't, they cannot move whether that dollar goes up or down, it's still 100 naira. We would go to the same places, KFC, tantalizers, you know, mama cost once in a while, blah, 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 blah. And we go there to eat. Now one of these days we're chilling and eating and my wife just happens to say to me that, you know what, one of these days, we should go to the Eco Hotel to have lunch. I said, eh? I said, I don't understand. She said, let's go to the Eco Hotel to have lunch. I said to her, don't you know their food is expensive? How much is their food? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? You have no facts for what you're afraid of. You have no facts for what you're afraid of. You just said the food is expensive. And then you associate a statement that people say, hey, you will go and wash plates. Oh. <laughs> have you seen, do you know anybody who has gone to wash, who has washed plates before? No. But those are expressions that keep you in a place of imprisonment mentally. Does anyone understand where I'm coming from? And so I read, then I now said, she now said, how much is the food? I said, that's not the issue. Then she now went on to, I said, look, 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 let's kill this thing right now. Because as she's saying it, the emotion that's in my heart is fear. I'm like, this woman wants to kill me. I'm still recovering from the bright price I paid. She now wants to, what? Evil woman, no. 
right? So I'm trying to shut this thing down. And then I blurt out, don't you know we have to manage? Oh. And then all of a sudden, it dawns on me, I'm becoming my father. It's not a bad thing, but I'm becoming my dad. And so I recognize, oh, drats, I need to change this program. I need to switch it. So I say to myself, you know what? I just discharged her. I used the one way to just discharge her, you know? But I said, I made a mental note. I need to break this program. Because there are certain things that are generational cycles. And they're not all spiritual. Many of them are mental. Then they become your physicality. So I said, listen, if I don't break this thing, my kids will never go to places like this. So one day I decided, you know what, one Wednesday, I just drove into the hotel. That day I had money. Somebody say money. I was prepared, man. No weapon formed against me. That day, I was ready. I had my debit cards were funded. And just in case network error, transaction declined, was something, I had cash back up. No, as in that day, I was ready. Right? Now, I drove into the Echo Hotel. Now, for those of you who have probably not been, so this is, good, this is good education. So I drove into the Echo Hotel, and there's a little ramp. So a, t a ticket timer, okay? So you have to get a ticket. So I took the ticket. And I noticed to, the, to, the, to, the, to my left that there's a little sign that says the first 15 minutes are free. And every hour after that is, is 200 bucks, exactly, 200 bucks. I said to myself in my air-conditioned car, I will be done in 15 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be out of here, done and dusted, 15 minutes. Now, hold on a second. Is 200 bucks my problem? No. But there's something wrong with my mind. So... If you have a poverty mentality and you go into a place of prosperity, you will be poor. You will only see poverty. So I drive in, find a parking lot, drop my car. Now I get into the Eco Hotel. I don't want nobody to know, man, that this is my first time. I can't let people know that Steve Harris, man, look at me. Ain't never been to the Eco Hotel before. How will I tell people that I have never been? So I don't want to ask for directions to where the restaurant is. Because I'm concerned about what other people who don't send me think about me. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? So after about 15 minutes of trolling, because I, you know, I'm walking around and looking at the signs, you know, looking around, because I don't want to ask nobody that this is my first time, right? Eventually, I find the restaurant 15 or 20 minutes later. I don't care. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm here. Might as well just enjoy it. So I sit in this restaurant, one of those, you know, their sky uh, lounges, and I'm sitting there. And while I'm there, my program is telling me, hey, 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 hey you will watch Plato, <laughs> you better. It's telling me, danger, danger, danger. So as I'm sitting and trying to, and I'm sitting under my breath, I'm trying to tell myself, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. Danger, I deserve to be here. Da We're having this internal conversation. Going, it's like I'm schizophrenic, just going back and forth. To end the con confusion, the waiter shows up, and he brings two menus. He says, would you like to order? I'm like, um, not at the moment, but can I have the, uh, the menu? So he brings the menu. I, I take the drinks menu, okay? Because as far as I'm concerned, by the drinks, you can tell how expensive the food will be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I take the, me the drinks menu, and I do this thing. It's called shopping on the right side of the menu. Now, what do I mean by that? On the left side is the item. On the right side is the price. So what you want is predicated not by what you want. It's predicated by the price of what you want. So I scroll. I use my finger. If you know what I'm about, I use my finger. And I'm looking at the cheapest things on the menu. And then I trace it to the item. And I find the cheapest thing on the menu, apart from water, is Coca-Cola or Chapman. So I say, you know what? Can I have Coca-Cola? 1,000 naira. Somebody say Coke. Somebody say Coke. 1,000. Right? So, I'm sitting there and I'm chilling. I'm trying to get this thing in my mind that I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. The waiter comes back with my menu, my order. Brings, you know, a glass of, you know, ice with a cucumber at the top and, you know, lime at the bottom. Brings a, a, a bottle of Coca-Cola. And then he proceeds to pour the Coca-Cola into the glass. Once the glass is full, he takes the, takes the, the bottle is about half full. Takes the bottle. Pizzi, you know the deal now. Takes the bottle and walks away. hey, <laughs> hey. Where are you going? <laughs> so, now, now I don't know about you guys are very posh and tush, yes? But I'm sitting there, and I'm like, where's he going? Should he go? See this guy. So I'm having all this conversation, so I'm like, excuse me. 
So the guy walks up. He says, yeah. I said, excuse me. And you know, I'm in this posh environment, so I don't want to make a scene. So I'm like, sorry. S excuse me. How far? Why are you taking this, this coconut? As in, it's not finished now. Because my life experience has taught me that when you buy Coca-Cola, it's liquid content only. You finish everything. So <laughs> finish it, yes? And he says to me, he says, Oga, it's your first time, Abi. <laughs> <laughs> now, even though that was embarrassing, because as far as I'm concerned, listen, that 1,000 naira, it's like, it's like a crate of coke outside. I don't know if you know. Like, so see this guy. Why are you taking my, you know? And that just totally changes my perception. It breaks the limits. So the next weekend, we go for lunch. And we still go to the same regular places. Because it will take some time before your finances will meet with your desires. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. But now, I get back to the same places that we normally eat. And all of a sudden, it's not comfortable. All of a sudden, I start noticing that the waitresses aren't very well dressed. And, they, you know, I start noticing that the bulbs are burned. And I start noticing that the service delivery is so slow. And I start noticing. My wife's like, what's the problem? I say, you don't understand. You don't, you don't get it because I can't tell her I've been to the promised land. <laughs> and this here place, it don't fit me no more. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? You cannot rise above the level of your convictions. You can't rise beyond what you believe. If you don't believe that they can pay you a million bucks, they will not pay you a million bucks. If none of your friends, if all your friends are earning 50, 50, 50, 50 K, four of your friends, you, my friend, will be friend number five, earning 50 K. If your associations don't inspire or intimidate you, you need new friends. You hear me what I'm saying? If your associations don't inspire or intimidate you, you need new friends. If you're the go-to guy in your circle, you need new friends. If you're the guy that everyone is coming to for advice, you need new friends. Does anyone understand where I'm coming from? You can't rise above the level of your convictions. Long story short, so I don't bore you, then I can get into this. I didn't, I didn't make 88 million like I planned. But without an office, without none of that stuff, I made about 17 million there. Do you think I was disappointed that I didn't make 88? Of course not. It was a breakthrough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a huge breakthrough. And the year after that, we th I think we made like 56 million or something like that. And all of a sudden, I'm like, for real? Listen, God's greatest desire for me, I don't know about you guys, for me, is to earn a fee doing something that I was created to do for free. Don't say that again. God's greatest desire for me is to earn a fee doing something that I was created to do for free. So I did that MC job. And all they paid me, and they paid, and the lady said to me, she said, ah, Steve, 300. Ha, ah, Steve, 300. Steve, 300. She said, can we pay 250? I said, ha, ah, 250. Ha, ah. 250. In my heart, I'm like, hey, hey, 250 for real? But you know, you can't, you can't throw that out there. You have to be very packed. You know, never negotiate when you're hungry. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? No, don't negotiate. If, 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 never, don't negotiate when you're hungry. Just tell them, you know, I'll think it over. I'll get back to you. Even if the money is a testimony, your whole generation, tell them, you know, let me get back to you. I'll think about it and go away. And like, father, you know? And they paid me 250K. And all I did was, ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome the newest couple in town. Give it up for Mr. and Mrs. And the whole crowd went, what? Did 30 minutes and they paid me 250K. Now, when they paid me that money, I was driving away with my wife, who then was my girlfriend, who today is my wife, but she still is my girlfriend. We drove out together. And I had this thing, it's not buyer's remorse. It's more like seller's remorse. And I said to her, it's not fair. She said, what do you mean? I said, it's not fair. I said, how can anyone pay me 250K for doing what I just did? This stuff was easy. I didn't, I didn't sweat, man. I didn't labor. I didn't toil. Because I have a limiting belief that says money must be sweated for. Money must be taught. If you don't sweat, you didn't make it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So I felt like I didn't earn it. So I said to her, I think we should give back, you know, give them some of their money back, man. 
my wife is Igbo. You know what I'm saying? Deposits only, no withdrawals. <laughs> my wife said, what? She said, don't you know we're getting married? Forget that. You don't give nobody nothing. But that opened something in my mind that I could get paid for doing this stuff. Is this making any sense? I'm trying to make this practical, okay? Practical, another practical example, then I get into this. Sitting at home, before all these breakthroughs started happening, I'd get a lot of invitations to come and speak at churches, events, whatever, you know? And I'm a nice guy. And I had this problem charging people for, for stuff that I could do for free. You know what I mean? Because I, I could do this in my sleep, so why are you going to pay me? So people would take advantage of that, so to speak. And they would call me and say, oh, man of God, won't you come and speak at this event, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, cool, no problem. I'll be there. And hoping that they would use their, quote, unquote, church mind. Yes? You take it for granted. And I go there. And I'd speak for hours and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears and throw the places up, tear it up. And by the time I'm done, they'll come at me and say, man of God, sir. Said, sir, you are a blessing. We can't pay you enough. We can't pay you what you are worth. And in my mind, I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Like, you know, uh, sir, you know, they'll now bring out an envelope. And they'll give you the envelope with enough honor and respect. If you could cash that honor and respect, it would be a lot. But they'll give you the envelope. And they'll say, um, sir, you know, it's not your worth, but please accept this. Um, blah, 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 blah. And so in my mind, I'm thinking the reason it's so light is because it's a check. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's a check. So you weigh, you're like, subconsciously, you're weighing it. You're like, okay. This feels like 50K, you know, hopefully. So I get into my car, and I'm driving off. But I don't drive too far. I just drive, then I park. <laughs> I just, let's, you know, let's see what's happening here. So I open the envelope. Instead of a check, I see in all its glory, 3K. <laughs> 3K <laughs> in mint notes. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? You know? 3,000 there, after all I've done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then they started graduating from 3K. They started giving me hampas. You know, noodles, spaghetti, indomie, biscuits. And then I had this epiphany, because then my wife was pregnant. She was already showing. And I had this epiphany. One day driving and complaining, and just totally complaining. And God says to me, he said, listen, man, hampas don't buy pampas. So I recognized, I said, okay. I said, how do I manage this thing? So I told my wife, right? I said to her, you know what? This is what we're going to do. I said, if anyone calls, I'm going to tell them that they should please call my business manager. So I want you to be the business manager, okay? So when they call, be negotiated for me because I don't know how to, quote unquote, negotiate very well. So I said to her, let's even make it better. Any fee you negotiate, I'll give you 10%. My wife is Igbo. So it sounded like a great idea. So people would call me, and then she would say, they would say, oh, um, we'd like Steve Harris to speak, yada, yada, speak. no problem, no problem, no problem. Um, how much are you offering? Well, no, we don't really have a budget, um, but we want to give him an honorarium. Okay, interesting. How much are you planning on giving him? Uh, well, maybe 20,000 naira. Now, for me, 20K is a big deal because it's a step up from a hamper. I don't know if you know what I mean. 3K hamper, 20K, the Lord is moving, right? And my wife says 20,000 naira. She does the math, 10% of 20K, 2K. No, 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 no. After all of this work, no, 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 no. So she says, no, um, I'm sorry. Now, check this out. She says, I'm so sorry. Um, I can't tell my boss to tell Steve Harris that he's going to speak for 20K. Do you hear what I just said? I can't tell my boss to tell Steve Harris, how many of us are working there, <laughs> right? That he's going to speak for 20,000. So she says, Steve Harris is, at the, this is like 2006, 7, 10, 2010. She says, Steve Harris's fees are 150,000 naira for an hour. Now, please also recognize that weekends are his most busy times. I'm like, no, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> You know, as she says, you know, basically it's on a first pay, first serve basis. So if you pay quickly, we can lock it down. But if you don't pay and somebody else comes, we'll give the person a date. They say, ah, 150,000 naira, we can't do that. It's out of our budget. Says, well, no problem. Um, if you guys are ready, please call. If you're not, um, we look forward to doing business with you some other time. Then she would hang up. I'm like, what the? 
don't you know we have a baby on the way? 20K is a big deal. Let, well, let's do it. He says, no, never negotiate when you're hungry. And then they would call back and say, you know what? We can't do 150, but can we do 100K? She says, 100K, 100K. She does the math, 10% of 100K is 10K. So, so okay, 10, 000, 100K, we can do that. We can, the virus will be there. And all of a sudden, whoosh, my income started climbing. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? I'm hoping with the examples I'm giving you, you're getting the lessons in between. All right, so let me move on. So you need to ask yourself the honest question. For what it is you do, are you really cut out for it? Because don't get it twisted. Being a personal brand, being an entrepreneur is, forgive the term, it, it's sexy, but it's a heck of a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Don't be fooled that enterprise is the, the new oil. It is hard work. You will have days you would second guess, third guess. You would, you know, you would ask. You would have days that you're not sure that this is what you should be doing with your life. You need to ask yourself if you are really cut out for this thing. All right. So let's get into something. I said here that mastering the business of your talent is 20% talent, but it's 80% business. So that's why you'd have a lot of talented individuals, you know, but they don't understand the business. So let me use business, uh, music, the music business. Don Jazzy may not, for example, be the best producer out there, but he understands business. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He understands business. So you may be better at this gift than I am, but I'm probably just a better businessman. All right? And like Ni nee has said, you have a whole digital empire in your hands. Social media, media. YouTube is literally, you have a video streaming service. Twitter, you have a public announcement platform. Instagram, you have a, a, a billboard. But if you don't know how these things connect and tie with each other, you're not going to be able to make any traction. I've seen music musicians put their stuff out on Linda Ikeji hoping people would go there and download it. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. You just, you've just made her richer. And that's, that, that's okay. That's her business model. But if your stuff is not amazing enough, see, no disrespect, right? Let me use MI. Do you know how many downloads Illegal Music 3 had? Do you guys know? In the first three days of its release, Illegal Music 3 was downloaded 400,000 times. 400,000 times in three days. Illegal Music 3. Right? So, listen. It first starts in your social sphere. So before you go on Linda, no, but listen, if I see your stuff on Linda, I cage you for, I'm not going to click because you're a gospel musician. Duh. And no disrespect, P.I. knows. I don't, I'm not a big fan of gospel music because gospel music is almost, and P.I. has explained it better, gospel music is almost synonymous with mediocre music. So if you're a rapper and you're a Christian rapper and you can't drop bars and ciphers better than M.I., please stay, cook your stuff. Just stay. Don't come out. Don't come out. If you can't do your stuff, if you can't bring it with the best of them, please don't, just don't. Because I know you will say, like P.I. said, God, the image behind the music, God will back up your stuff. True. True. But you got to do your work. So David going to fight Goliath, see, David was skilled. He was skilled in war and battle. So when God's image, God's image came behind his, uh, his skill, it was lethal. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. God can multiply anything. If you give God zero, zero multiplied by a thousand is zero. I hope you're understanding where I'm coming from. All right? So, move beyond talents. A lot of us are into skill, but then a lot of us don't know the business of what we do. So the question is, what is your bait? What is your product? If you don't understand what your product is, now please understand, people don't buy free stuff. But now it's good to give stuff for free so that people get to know you. But that stuff you give must be totally off the chain, if you understand where I'm coming from. It has to be so good that people now say, you know what, can I, okay, how much would it cost? Don't give whack stuff 
and expect people to pay for it. Make sure that your bait is fantastic. My friend, one of my friends, uh, he's, he's worried, he's, uh, you know, he speaks pigeon very well, but there's a phrase he says. He says that, and I, 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 I don't know how to say it very well, but he says it's the person who uses a goat to set a trap knows what he wants to catch. Does anybody understand? If you can translate it into pidgin, I'm sure you'll get the pidgin in English version of it. But the essence of this is you've got to make sure that your quality is amazing. You are a product. You must package it. And packaging enhances value. Packaging enhances value. Right? And I said here, everyone is gifted, but some people never open their package. Your packaging is important. So whether you're a gospel musician or whatever it is you do, your packaging must be excellent. I've gone into presentations with you know, boards and you know, trainings and stuff like that, and they would say to me, what's, what, what, what software are you using for your presentations? And I'll say to them, oh, it's PowerPoint. They say, no, 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 it can't be PowerPoint because the stuff you're doing with it, I've never seen anybody do it with PowerPoint. Then I have to literally open the laptop and say, see, it is actually PowerPoint. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Your packaging must be fantastic. Check this out. The Bible says in Proverbs, where is it? Come on, where is it? Where is it? Right? Let me. It says, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Let me quickly say this. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. But here's the thing. If your gift has not made room for you, please make room for your gift. Did you hear what I just said? A man's gift will make room for him. But if your gift has not made room for you, it is up to you to make room for your gift. Let me end with this analogy. And unfortunately, you know what I'm teaching you? I teach it over six weeks. <laughs> I teach it over, so to compress this in an hour is technically impossible. But let me use this analogy to, to, to wrap this up. The problem shows up. Goliath shows up. And then... Everybody's wondering who's going to take out the giants. Now understand this. The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the greater the value associated with that solution. Are you, are you with me so far? The greater the value, the bigger the money people will place on that value. The bigger the money, the bigger the boy. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? I'll say it again. The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the greater the value. The greater the value, the bigger the money, the bigger the money, the bigger the boy. So here's the thing. Goliath shows up, and only David has the wherewithal, right, to be able to handle the, the giants. So now, he doesn't just say, ah, this giant that is coming to uh, fight Israel. Oh, what can we do? No, 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 no. The Bible says, go and check it out. The Bible says that David said, what shall be done for the man? Who takes this big problem out of Israel? And the Bible says that David's brother tried to shut him up. He says, listen, listen, listen. Why, you think I'm here for no reason? He said, don't you know that there's a cause for me to be here? And the Bible says that David continually kept going to ask people, what shall be done? What shall be done? What shall be done? Until, the Bible says, his words were taken to the king. He didn't say, oh, I have the solution. If only somebody would give me a chance. Nobody will give you a chance in this life. You will take the chance. If there's no, see, if nobody gives you a platform, make one. If no one gives you an opportunity, make one. Take one. Life is not going to give you anything. Does anyone understand where, where I'm coming from? And the Bible says that he kept asking, what shall be done? And the Bible says they took all the stuff to Saul. And then he now had to defend himself. But now this is the thing. When you get into the place of negotiation, right? What is important is not necessarily what you are about to do. What is important is what you have done. It is your track record. That's why the Bible says, that's why the Bible says that Saul said, listen, you can't take this guy out. This guy has been killing people since he was a kid. You are just a kid. So he's saying that you don't have experience. And David said, listen, don't get it twisted. I have experience. Maybe not as vast as you expect. But when a lion came, I did this. When a bear came, I did this. This guy is just like another animal. In fact, he's at a disadvantage. Because the other animals have four legs. This guy has two. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? So 
at the place of negotiation, it's not what you are about to do. It's what you have done. So the question is, what are you doing now that the spotlight is not on you? How are you being faithful, honing your skills and your craft now that nobody has ever heard of you? Are you putting in the work? Malcolm Gladwell, he talks about this 10,000 hour principle, right? That if you've done something consistently for 10,000 hours, you will be a master at it. But we're not putting in the work. I was, I was, I was reading an article yesterday on Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is the hardest, hardest working man in hip hop. They say that Lil Wayne has over 1,500 tracks that every day, every day he records three songs. The lyrics are different, the raps are different, the music is different. Every day he must record three songs. And he's just 30. Is it a small wonder that Lil Wayne, Young Money, blah, blah, blah. Listen, man. Yes, there is the image behind the music. But there must be the skill in front of the image. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? You have to work it, you have to hone it, and you have to do something with it. I'm sorry my time is up. But I hope this has made some sense to somebody.